One of the most brilliant and spectacular monarchs to ever have ruled over England was Queen Elizabeth I. And during her reign, it was said that there was a golden age across the nation. But despite Elizabeth's time on the throne bringing a number of positives to England, she was a woman who could be ruthless and violent herself. Elizabeth I was a queen who said she was married to her nation and country, but she was not afraid to make decisions that would send people to their deaths. She executed Mary, Queen of Scots, an anointed Scottish monarch and her cousin who served as a threat to her. This would haunt Elizabeth even on her deathbed. But Elizabeth I's demise and death was one which was a long departure from her spirited and positive former self, and the Queen suffered greatly with depression in her final days. But what is the story of the dreadful death of Queen Elizabeth I? Elizabeth I was the final Tudor monarch, and she did not have any children, leading to a problem about who would be the king or queen after her. Decisions were made to approach the Scottish King James to become James I of England, and he did accept this. Interestingly, James was the son of Mary, Queen of Scots, the very woman that Elizabeth I executed. But medical treatments, even for the wealthy and the royals during this period, were still very poor, as doctors were considered quacks and they were using medieval remedies and treatments such as bleeding and purging. But Elizabeth I was not always an image of Gloriana, and she was sick a number of times throughout her life. She suffered from the deadly diseases of smallpox, and with this she was left scars on her face. These concerned her greatly. She worried about her beauty, and she was concerned that these blemishes and problems would lead to her not finding a husband. She even ordered painters to paint over the scars and to make the images of her without them. But as she aged, she was not an image of youth and beauty any more, and one ambassador who visited her court noted that her teeth are very yellow and unequal, many of them are missing, so that one cannot understand her easily when she speaks quickly. But Elizabeth I reigned for around 45 years, which was a huge achievement during the Tudor period. In her final years, she became very depressed and sad, especially as many of her close friends and ladies passed away. In 1590, Blanche Parry, her closest lady-in-waiting, died, and Parry was the chief gentlewoman of the Queen's Privy Chamber, and was also said to have been the keeper of the Queen's jewels. She had known the Queen since she was just a child, and she did everything that Elizabeth wanted, and Blanche Parry was seen as a baroness, and her death hit Elizabeth incredibly hard. But then in 1598... Another one of her closest friends and her most senior advisers, Cecil, died. He had been by the Queen's side throughout most of her reign and through many different tough times and had supported her, even when she was young. The deaths of these people that the Queen had held in deep regard hit her hard, and then she became more withdrawn and reclusive, but she still served with ruthlessness. She oversaw the execution of her former favourite, Robert Devereux, a man who many believed could have possibly been a husband for Elizabeth, despite the rather large age gap. Devereux had been convicted of high treason for his rebellion and insurrection, and he was deemed as a traitor, and he lost his head on Tower Hill in front of a large crowd. But in the January of 1603, Queen Elizabeth I was not very well, and she was not in a good mood at all. The Queen retired to Richmond Palace, which was one of her favourite homes, and this was a place where she felt very comfortable, and in her final months and days, she surrounded herself with her loyal ladies and other attendants. She turned her back on food and drink, and also lost a lot of weight, and Elizabeth's ladies then became very concerned about her. They knew what was on the horizon, and despite appealing to Elizabeth to allow doctors into her quarters, Elizabeth refused any treatment. But another death also caused further upset as Catherine Howard's death hurt the Queen and she was a woman who had served Elizabeth for 45 years and she died very suddenly. This may have been the final nail in the coffin of the last Tudor Queen and it was said regarding this that the Queen loved the Countess well and hath much lamented her death, remaining ever since in a deep melancholy that seemeth to be overtaken. But in the February of 1603, 
Elizabeth I remained in this very severe depression, and she was no way near her former self. Elizabeth was the queen who had defeated the Spanish Armada and inspired her nation to victory, but now she was vacant most of the time, and she was approaching 70 and was very frail. The Queen continued to refuse to rest when she attended court, and her ladies were concerned that she would fall, so they laid pillows all over her bedchambers in case she did have a fall. There were more deaths of her ladies, including Lady Nollies and also Catherine Grey, the Countess of Nottingham, but Elizabeth had enough of life. She was constantly upset, and in the March of 1603 she fell sick herself. She would sit on her cushions for hours on end, motionless and in deep thought, and she was pondering her life during these episodes and moments, and she may have been regretting her decisions to carry out the executions of some of her favourites, and in particular Mary, Queen of Scots. It was said that Elizabeth never truly wanted to execute Mary, her cousin, as she believed this would have prevented her from getting into heaven, executing another woman, who would have been sent by God to rule over her kingdom. If she hadn't have done this either, there was a good chance that Mary could have become the Queen of England. One witness said that the Queen shed many tears and sighs, maintaining her innocence that she never gave consent to the death of that Queen. Elizabeth was even visited by ghostly figures and was haunted by people, including Mary, in her final days. But to everyone, in the March of 1603, it was clear that this would be the Queen's final illness. Her depression, along with her delirium and her overall health, all continued to decline and frail. She took to her bedchambers, and the Archbishop of Canterbury was then summoned to come to her bedside and to pray for her. He told Elizabeth not to worry about the afterlife, and he said that she would go to heaven and she would be looked after by angels, reigning once again in the afterlife. But on the 24th of March, 1603... Queen Elizabeth I passed away inside of Richmond Palace. Her body was taken to Whitehall, where it was then held in state, but a number of Elizabeth's final wishes were not adhered to. Elizabeth stipulated that she did not want to be embalmed and eviscerated with her heart and her internal organs removed from her body after death, but this did occur, and it was possibly a good job that this did happen, because... When her coffin was moved, there was a very loud crack that was heard from within it, and it was claimed that her body broke open as various gases were released from her decaying corpse. But the explosion even splintered her coffin and some of the wooden shell, and this would have been worse if she hadn't have been disemboweled. The funeral of Queen Elizabeth I occurred on the 28th of April, 1603, and when she was laid to rest inside of Westminster Abbey. The funeral procession was huge and thousands of people came onto the streets of London to pay their last respects. It was said by a witness that there is such a general sighing and groaning and weeping as the like had not been seen or known in the memory of man. She was a woman who was loved by her people and she had a very interesting reign over England. Elizabeth I, to begin with, was laid to rest inside of the same vault as her grandfather and grandmother, Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, the founders of the Tudor dynasty. However, she was later moved by James I to be buried inside of a huge tomb that had been made for her, and is laid to rest opposite Mary, Queen of Scots, her infamous rival. Thank you for watching and support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.